this patient was referred to me for endodontic retreatment of tooth number three according to the patient the root canal is a few years old and it was done by an endodontist the endodontist um, had gone through the crown here porcelain crown and did the root canal for this patient uh, a few years ago recently tooth started to hurt and um, you can see why you can see a periperiolucency here associated with the tooth all right so let's see here let me show you um okay so this is when i saw the patient and it was almost a month ago when i saw her and that's the tooth here and you can see there was a little bit of a buccal swelling on the superior aspect of the tooth right here so patient is scheduled to come to see me and came in to see me today a month a month after i had seen her for the um, consultation and look what happened here so that buccal slight buccal swelling had turned into actually now a um, small partialis and sinus tract and that's the tooth here right here as you can see all right so um all right so let's let's talk about this again um you hear me often i talk about um cbct and the fact that uh, i most of the times don't need it i don't need it i talk about myself if you guys want to get a cbct by all means i'm not saying that to i'm not recommending um that that you guys shouldn't get a cbct <laughs> but most of the time for me i don't need a cbct because i can read pas as I said, in 23 um, uh, years of practice, I've only needed uh, to use CBCT a handful of times, just a handful of times. Most of the times, there is really no need for a CBCT. I already know what's, what the problem with this tooth is. The problem is there is a missed MB2. This endodontist missed an MB2. And I tell you why he missed an MB2, because he, his axis was a ninja axis. So his axis was so small and that's why I don't recommend that um, that the clinicians uh, do uh, do a ninja access or what those really really conservative access endo accesses because of a um, situation like this. This endo access was so small that this dentist, of course, endodontist, um, going through the crown missed missed the MB two. So take a look here. So we went through the endo previous endo axis, of course, and I modified it, made it large enough, not not a blowout, but made it large enough that I could actually see the anatomy, and I was able to redo this root canal for this patient in one appointment. So take a look here. All right. So here, uh, <laughs> mid treatment, as I had removed most of the gutta percha. Uh, I was trying to get a, a working length on the palatal, and palatal, according to our uh, uh, radiograph, estimated was 21, and I was at 23, and I was still not uh, not getting a signal from the apex locator. And I immediately went to my working length PA, and as you can see, I was a mil short. So this, the working length on the palatal was 24. All right, so take a look here, and here's the post op. So as you can see, there was a missed MB2 right here that we were able to locate. And take a look here, look at that beautiful anatomy that we were able to capture, that beautiful lateral that we were able to capture uh, right into the lesion as well. So missed MB2 because of a very limited ninja axis or extremely conservative endo axis this dentist, endodontist had made going through the crown. And here is another another angulation and you can see that beautiful lateral right into the that lesion there that lateral lesion there but definitely there was a missed uh, missed mb2 and uh, you can see it again better here although there's this is cut but you can see the mb2 that this endodontist had missed and uh, this is another angulation again you can see the mb1 mb2 the stable column palatal and that beautiful lateral right into the lesion there and here's another angulation again 
you can see the mb1 missed mb2 that we were able to capture that beautiful anatomy there that beautiful lateral there the stobalcon palatal everything went great we went ahead and temporized the tooth and referred the patient back to um, her dentist for the permanent permanent restoration and i'm optimistic that the buccal parulus and sinus tract will go away and uh, patient's uh, body will start to regrow and regenerate all that bone that was lost.